Okie dokie. Howdy, howdy. So if you have run any lateral flow amino assays, you may have heard of the hook effect. This is something that can happen when you have improperly optimized your assay conditions, specifically the ratio of microsphere binded antibodies or antigens, whatever your receptor is, to the ratio of expected uh, target ligand in your solution. Uh, if you if you look uh, look it up on YouTube, you can find a few videos of of women who have taken pregnancy tests, but they got a false negative. This is something that can happen if you have a very high amount of antigen. It shouldn't be too common because there are protocols to mitigate it. But if you're in this field, you should know it and understand it. So I will be using TechNote 201 as a reference. If you haven't seen the TechNote 205 series, highly recommend take a look at that document or the videos I did going through the documents. They're really good for learning about how to develop a covalent coupling protocol and optimize it. TechNote 201 just goes into a little bit of detail about the microspheres itself. And there's a section I'll show you, but let's go into the basics first because it's important you understand what's happening here. So here we have our target. Let's say we are, let's say we're doing the pregnancy test. So the pregnancy test looks for the HCG uh, hormone in urine. And if a woman is pregnant, there's gonna be a high amount of that hormone. Now on the Y axis, we have our signal. On the pregnancy test, that is just typically the color, the line, the intensity of the color being produced. They don't really um, provide a estimated value, but you're tweaking your assay to produce a signal once it's past a certain concentration. So that's how that's provided. Now, what you would expect is, okay, a high concentration of hormone is gonna give me a high signal. True. A low concentration of hormone is gonna give me a low signal, maybe no signal. Now, while this is true, in practice, because your signal is being produced based on the clumping of your signaling molecules, and that's caused by the immunoagglutination between them the antibody and antigen between them. So because that's where you're getting your signal from, what actually happens is if you have a very high concentration of your target hormone, it actually is going to oversaturate the binding sites. So they aren't able to aggregate with other microspheres and create a signal. So instead of getting a high signal or even a medium signal, you basically get no signal at a very high concentration. So instead of having a linear graph like this, what you actually get in immunoassays typically is something more like this. And that's why it's called the hook effect, just because it, it hooks over. So let's go over into TechNote 201 to look at this in more detail. Okay. So I, I just, I, I really like this explanation for it. Um, they do a really good job. So here's the figure. Now condition A, this is what you're looking for. So here, um, instead of doing uh, antibodies binded to the microspheres, they're doing the opposite. It's fine, it's the same thing. They've got antigen coded microspheres and antibody in sample. Now, this is what you're looking for. The antibodies are bridging between two microspheres to produce a signal. That's what you're working to get. What happens if you have added too much antigen to your microsphere when you created the sample? So this is situation B. And as you can see, there's so much antigen on your sample that there's no opportunity to agglutinate because they're so packed closely together, the antibodies can just bridge on their own microsphere. Situation C microspheres with too little antigen. So this is just where there's not enough binding sites to create that bridging effect. So as you can see, these are both 
irrespective of the amount of target in your sample. These are purely about how much you're adding. The next thing is microspheres are too dilute, too far apart. This is also something that you're working with in your optimization protocol is, is how many microspheres do you want? So here we have the correct ratio of antibodies and antigens, um, but they're, they're, the microspheres are just too far apart. They're not getting close enough to interact. And then this one here is the one that is called the hook effect. And just in my experience, it has been it's the most typical one you can run into because you can have a really properly optimized solution um, regarding the antibody to antigen ratios expected. But then if you have a sample with just so much of that target analyte in there, it is going to completely oversaturate. And this also will create no signal. So what I wanna tell you, and there are different ways to handle this. One example could be producing two different batches of microspheres for handling a different range of concentrations, but there is a nifty trick you can also use to handle it. So what you can do is use the dilution protocol. Now this will take longer to analyze, but you have your sample one, with an unknown amount of your target antigen. And then you want to create a dilution of it, say 10% dilution. And you wanna test both of these. So that way you can use the signal produced from both samples to create a more accurate estimation of where it would land on your concentration uh, graph. So here, let me give you a couple scenarios. This is going to be okay. So here, see if you can see if you can figure it out. So you're going to test sample one, and you get okay. Let's start easy. You test sample one, and you get a signal down here. Then you test sample two. You get a signal down here. What is that? Likely, that's a negative sample. Okay. Let's do another situation. You test a sample and you get something here. And then you test the next one and you get something here. Positive sample. Guaranteed. Okay, third situation. You test the first sample, you get this. You test the second sample, you get this. Yeah, so that would be, according to the theory of the hook effect, most likely that is a positive sample and it's probably a pretty high concentration. You could do more dilutions to actually really narrow in on a pretty accurate prediction of the concentration especially if you've already constructed the standard curve, which we discussed a little bit before. But yeah, so this is a quick overview of the hook effect. It's a, it's a very fascinating phenomena that you absolutely are going to be seeing in these tests. So make sure to take it into consideration. Please make sure you're optimizing your assays and really taking into account your expected concentration of these solutions you're looking at. You don't want to be putting tests out there that are telling people they're not pregnant when they are. Um, this is something that you should be thinking about and really paying attention to when you're constructing the tests. Okay, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, yeah, and check out TechNote 201. I will put the link for that one below as well as the 205 videos. Great resources. Okay. Cheers.